Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech. In today's video, I will share 10 advanced tips and tricks for the iPhone that you may not be aware of, but which are in fact extremely useful and will bring you closer to mastering your iPhone. Now in this video, I will be using an iPhone 6S Plus for the demonstration, but these tips equally apply to the 6S, the 6, 6 Plus, and many others. So let's dive right in and learn some useful and exciting tips. All right, so tip number one, the secret menu that you can enable that's gonna float on the screen and it's gonna give you a bunch of functions you can access right from that menu. First, let's go and actually enable that setting. All right, so go into settings, scroll down to general, go inside, and then look for accessibility, just tap it. And at the bottom here, where it says interaction, you're going to enable assistive touch. So let's tap that. And as you can see, now we have a little menu that you can actually float about on the screen. You can put it on the top over here. You can put it at the bottom over here. You can put it anywhere that you guys want. What you can do is you can tap this icon and it's actually going to give you some of the functions you can achieve by pulling down the notification center or pulling up the control center or even pressing the home icon. So let me press the home icon right here. If I go over here, if I press the home icon, it takes me home. The same can be achieved by tapping this and then pressing the same home icon right over here. Okay, so let me show you guys that. Tap it, let's go home, there we go. You're back home. And other things you can do is if you tap that software icon, you can activate Siri. Hey, how's the weather like in New York? Okay, so let me exit Siri, but instead of using the home icon right here, I'm gonna use the software home key which is right there. If you tap it, it goes right back home. Now again, as you know, iPhone has the notification panel if you pull it down, and it also has the control center if you pull it up, okay? You can access these guys without having to swipe simply by tapping this secret menu right over here. So if I tap notification center, it comes right down, and I can do the same with the control panel, control center, and that comes right up. And let me show you guys one more thing and then I'll let you play with the whole thing by yourself. If you tap device, you can actually control the volume, you can lock the screen, you can mute or unmute the phone all from this tiny secret menu. Okay, so tap device, let's lock the screen. As you can see, the screen just locked by itself. Okay, so let's unlock it. Let me just use my fingerprint. There we go, it's right there. Click device, volume up. And as you can see, you can control the volume. Also, if you go back into the settings, as you can see, you can customize the top level menu. So if you tap this guy, this is the top level menu right here. Okay, if you click this, you can change the things you do not want. You can even decrease the amount of icons you want to see. So the maximum is in fact eight icons you can have on that secret menu. If you wanna add something else, you just click plus and you simply pick what you want, triple click. So you can even assign the triple click gesture right to the home icon. So let's tap that, and that's going to perform a triple click gesture. Let me show you one more thing. So if you go back into settings, and let's uh, add one more, let's add uh, the multitasking gesture, click plus, scroll down, tap on multitasking, click done, get out, now tap it again, and now you can actually bring up multitasking just by tapping this guy right over here, okay? Absolutely fantastic. You can get a lot of stuff done just in this tiny menu that is floating on the screen. And if you put it aside, it hides by itself by reducing its opacity, yet it's always available because you can actually see it lightly. Tap it, it activates. Very good. Now tip number two has to do with the notifications panel. So as you can see, when you pull this down, on this side, you have all your notifications. And as you can see, I have a lot of these guys, okay? So there are some things you can do to customize the notifications panel. If you go into settings, if you go into the main screen, right over here, simply go to notifications, and then from here, go to sort order. So what you can do is you can uh, manually order them, or you can order them by time. So your most recent notifications are going to appear on the top. Okay, so if I pull this down, as you can see, 
That was two minutes ago. That was 24 minutes ago. That was two hours ago. And the reason is because I have them set to sort by most recent. The most recent goes on top. You can also order notifications manually. So if I tap manual, what's going to happen is it's going to actually put the notifications that come from calendar to the top most and the phone comes the next, messages the third and so on and so forth. Now if I want uh, notifications from my game center to be on the top, I can simply, let me put this aside, I can simply uh, grab this and drag and drop it to the top. Okay, so if I pull this down, anything that came from the game center is going to go on top. And let me just demonstrate that. Let's go down here and see what we have. Uh, we have something from Robinhood. So I'm going to take the application, uh, Robinhood. I'm going to drag it all the way to the top. Okay, so this is going to be my first notification that I'll see. So now, if I go back and pull this thing down, you'll see that the Robin Hood has moved, has moved to the top most. So that's one thing. Let's go back. I'm going to show you one more thing over here. Uh, if you go back into notifications, what you can do is, let's go to recent, go back over here, and you can also choose to group notifications by app. So all the notifications from your inbox are going to be grouped under the title inbox, okay? And all your notifications under the application Mint is going to be grouped under Mint. Same with Twitter and same with every other application. Alrighty, and then if you disable this, they actually just get listed by times. Let's go back, as you can see now everything is simply randomized, but it's only listed by time. But the moment you enable Group App, everything gets bundled together under its own application. And the next thing I want to show you is the Control Center. So if you go into Settings, if you go under Control Center, you can actually disable access to the Control Center on the lock screen. So normally you can access your lock screen anywhere. So I can pull it out right over here. I can access it on my lock screen right now. So let's go back here to the lock screen. And as you can see, I can pull the uh, Control Center up. I can actually disable that. So simply disable this option, go back to the lock screen, and now the Control Center is inaccessible. Okay, you may want to do this if you don't want people accessing your phone, uh, the functions that are available on this control center. And of course, you can do the same with the apps. So if I have an app launched, like uh, let's go to the uh, news application, I can actually access the control center no problem. But what if I was playing a game and I don't want to be swiping around and then the lock screen comes up and that's going to interrupt my game. So I can disable that. If I go back to the news application, I'm not going to be able to access the control center. Okay, These are very good options. All right, so next tip has to do with restrictions. So there's a couple apps on here that you may want to restrict from access. If you give your phone to somebody else and they're playing with your phone, let's say you gave it to them because you want them to play a game but you don't want them to access certain applications. You can enable restrictions on your iPhone. All right, so let's go into the settings and scroll down to general and then scroll down again to restrictions and click this. Now the first time you access this screen, it's going to ask you for a password, okay? So pick a password and plug it in and then you're going to come to this screen. So from here, these are the applications you can in fact disable. You can disable Safari, let's disable that. You can disable the camera. Uh, you can disable Siri. You can disable FaceTime. And then when you go back out there, Safari is gone, the camera is gone, and everything else I disabled is in fact gone. So let's go back to settings, go back into restrictions, and then let's re-enable all these guys. And of course, you have all these options at the bottom here. You can disable the store. You can disable the iBooks. My favorite is disabling the installation of applications, deleting applications, and also disabling in-app purchases, okay? So if, so if you give your game to a kid, he will just press any button that he pleases. Some of those buttons allow him to make in-app purchases, and if he keeps doing that, the dollars are going to add up very fast, and you're not going to be happy. So make sure 
you actually enable this when you give your phone to somebody else who's going to play games on your phone. Okay, so let's uh, restrict in-app purchases and let me just restrict application deletion and I'm going to show you that you cannot delete an application while that is enabled. So let's try to delete this application right here. As you can see, the X symbol that you normally see on the top corner here is not there, so you cannot delete the applications. Okay, so let's move on to the next tip. All right, so the next tip has to do actually scrolling. It's a tip based on scrolling. So if you go to Safari, and let's say you go to a website, and you scroll all the way down, okay? Sometimes the websites are very long, and you don't want to scroll all the way up. You just want to go to the top immediately. All you have to do is tap the white bar, the bar on the top, the status bar, one time, and that's going to make sure the screen, uh, the application that you're in, jumps to the top. And this works anywhere. I'm going to just show you one example. Let's go to settings for a minute here, and let's scroll down. If I tap the bar on the top, oops, not that one. Let's do it one more time. Let's go down, tap the bar, and as you can see, it jumps to the top of that screen. Okay, so the next tip is one of my favorites. So let me show you what I'm going to be doing. Let's go to Safari, and here is a website I access all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this button right here, and I'm going to say, add this to my home screen by, click, uh, by clicking this plus icon right here. And that's going to bring up a menu. I can give the app icon a name and then click add. And that's going to send that to my uh, home screen. It's even going to pick an icon for me. So that's now a shortcut that takes me straight to Amazon.com without me having to launch Safari and type in Amazon.com. So let's just tap that and boom, you're on Amazon.com. Let's do one more because I'm going to link this to another tip. So let's go to Google.com because I use Google all the time. Or let's just go to Apple. Okay, so here's Apple.com. Click that icon. Click plus. Pick a name and click add. Okay, and that goes to your home screen. What I like to do is I like to bundle all my favorite websites under a folder. So I can grab this guy, okay, and I can drag and drop it, and I can create a folder. And then I'll go and give that folder a name. I can call this one bookmarks. But if I have similar websites like CNN or BBC or stuff like that, like news channels, I can put all my news bookmarks in one place and simply say news bookmarks. I can do the same with shopping websites. I can do the same with uh, podcasting websites. You get the idea. You can organize and you can actually add bookmarks into folders that send you directly to the website that you want just by tapping on that icon. Okay, so if I want to go to Apple, boom, apple.com. So a lot of you guys probably use the camera on the iPhone, but there are certain options you can tweak as far as recording video goes. So if you launch the camera, and let's scroll to the video, and your camera can actually record in 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. 30 frames per second takes less space, but it is also less smooth. 60 frames per second takes a little bit more space on your iPhone, but it is extremely smooth video recording. So how do you toggle between 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second? If you look at the bottom here, right now, my camera is set to record at 60 frames per second. So all you have to do is you go home, tap settings, go to the main screen, and scroll down to where it says photos and camera, right over here. If you tap it, you can scroll down, you can go to record video, and you can switch between these different options. So this is 720p at 30 frames per second. You don't want that. This is full high definition at 30 frames per second, which is the default. And then you can do uh, full high definition at 60 frames per second. Now this is an iPhone 6S, so it actually has the capability to record in 4K. So there is also an option here that I can pick. And that's going to make sure that my phone uh, my camera records at 4K. And if I scroll over, it's going to tell me right over there. Okay, so just a keep an eye right over there to make sure that you're recording in the correct format that you guys desire. And again, just in case you have an iPhone success, if you go to settings again, if you go back over here, you'll say you'll see that it says record in slow motion. So if you go over here, you actually have two options. You can record at 120 frames per second 
in full high definition or you can do 720p at 240 frames per second that's going to give you super slow motion shots. So let's just switch to 1080p at 120 frames per second and see what happens. Let's go back into the camera uh, right over here and as you can see next to slow motion it says 120 frames per second okay but if I was to go back into the other setting over here this is the default setting so in that case it's not going to say anything but if you go to 1080p it's going to actually show you that you're recording at 120 frames per second and the next tip has to do with your fingerprints now I'm sure everybody has a fingerprint set up on your phone that's not what I'm going to show you let's go into settings and I'll show you what I want to talk about if you scroll down to where it says touch ID and passcode just go inside let me just put my password really quick and once you are in here I just want you guys to notice here it says finger one and finger two now I remember that I did my thumb first and then I did my finger okay so finger one is my thumb and finger two is my index finger now what I can do is I can actually tap on this and change the name okay so I can say thumb and click done and that's going to make sure that I remember which one is which in case I want to come and add a third finger okay so I can choose this finger I can choose this finger but then I know already that I already use my thumb I already use my uh, index finger so now I can use my middle finger if I have to well thank you for watching this video make sure you subscribe to Saki Tech and give this video a thumbs up also follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Saki Tech Online for which links are in the description below. Have a fantastic day.